Good morning, everyone. My name is Ruhi Sahu, and I'm a student at The Ohio State University. Today, I'm excited to be hosting the first session of our conference, The Path to a Nursing Profession, featuring two amazing speakers who will be sharing their insights on pursuing a career in nursing and navigating this career path. Jessica Barnett is a nursing student at Penn's Accelerated BSN program with plans to work for a year before pursuing her master's as a pediatric acute nurse practitioner. Melanie Martin is also in Penn's Accelerated BSN program with an ultimate goal of working outpatient as a neurology nurse practitioner. Attendees, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A section throughout the presentation and we'll get to them soon after. Please help me in welcoming Jessica and Melanie. And we will be using Paired Deck, which I think you are familiar with. Um, so feel free to join in to make it more interactive in answering the questions. So yeah, just to, um, just to start as you guys are joining. So yeah, so Jess and I are in the Accelerated BSN program at Penn. Um, we graduate in December and we're going to give a little bit of background about our path to nursing, um, as well as just, you know, what makes nursing unique as a career and also all the different career options that you have if you are thinking about pursuing a career in nursing. Um, all right, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. It looks like it's slowing down a little bit. So let's get started. All right. So I'm gonna have Jess introduce herself first. Hi everyone, I'm Jess. Um, I am from Vermont and my background is I, when I first started college, um, I knew that I wanted to be in the health field of some sort, I wasn't really sure what that would look like. Um, and so I started at um, St. Michael's College and I got a degree in biology. Um, I was thinking maybe that I would go to PA school to become a physician's assistant, but again, wasn't really sure. So I got a degree in biology um, and minored in Spanish and chemistry. And really the, what enabled me to find my direction in the healthcare field was some of the experiences that I looked at um, throughout my college career. Um, so some of the noteworthy ones um, in my first two years of college, I volunteered for child life at a local hospital. Um, if you're unfamiliar with child life, um, they provide a lot of um, assistance to pediatric patients. So it's like providing games or um, developmentally appropriate education tools. Um, and it's kind of helping pediatric patients feel more comfortable in the hospital setting. Um, and then I also participated in immunogenetics research. So that's research at the bench, um, doing a lot of like pipetting, um, looking at DNA sequences and from there, I started narrowing things down like, yeah, I don't think I want to go into research. Um, and sort of my most defining experiences were the last two listed. Um, I studied abroad through a pre-health program um, through Middlebury College. And this program allowed me to be enrolled as a nursing student in um, a university in Viña del Mar, Chile. And so... I got to enroll as a second, um, second year nursing student. And so I had clinicals in Chile and took some classes there and found that, you know, like the nursing model is something that I was really interested in. From there, that was my, the beginning of my senior year of college. And the second semester of my senior year in college, I had an internship with the Vermont Medical Examiner. So this is the person who does autopsies. Um, sounds kind of gory, sounds kind of weird, freaky, but it was honestly um, an incredible learning experience, both in um, just anatomy of the human body, but also more so in like the perspective of um, what healthcare can do for people. Um, also, where I wanted to fit in with healthcare and sort of the life perspective on, you know, what's important and, and where do I want my career to go. Um, I had a lot of exposure to um, physicians in this role and found that, you know, I, I don't really um, identify with going with the disease model, didn't really want to go down the um, doctor route. So then um, after college, I wanted a little bit of a break. So from 2018 to 2019, I was in English as a second language teacher in South Korea. So I taught elementary students English. Um, there I solidified, I want to work with kids. Um, and in that time, I realized I really need to be in healthcare. I know that I like the nursing model. I know I like working with kids. So I um, returned from Korea and started applying to nursing programs. 
And um, in the time that I was applying to nursing programs, um, 2019 to 2020, I worked as a medical assistant at a community health center. And for me, working as a medical assistant served as a way to get my foot in the door in the medical field um, and get exposure to taking down patient medical histories, communicating with providers and learning sort of the dynamics within healthcare, and then working on the hard skills of like um, administering a vaccine or taking drawing blood and things like that. Um, so those are some of the highlights of my experiences. If you have any questions about those later, as Melanie said, and people out there said, put it in the chat box and we can address it later. But that was my path to, to nursing. All right. So, um, and then just a little bit about me. Um, so I graduated from Arcadia University, small liberal arts college outside of Philadelphia. Um, I got my BA in biology in 2015. Um, I also minored in psychology. And that was sort of my way of trying to create my own neuroscience major um, because we did not have one at my school. Um, but I always was interested in science since I was little. Um, I was always interested in the brain specifically. And so I kind of thought I wanted to go more of the bench science route. And so I conducted a lot of research um, at my college, which was nice because it was such a small school. I was able to work really um, hands-on with my professors for all four years that I was there. Um, I interned at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia between my junior and senior year. Um, and that sort of solidified, okay, I'm gonna pursue the research route. And so I ended up actually pursuing a PhD in neuroscience after graduation. I went right into the program. I quickly realized that that was not for me. Um, I just really felt so disconnected from working with people. Um, and I liked my coursework a lot. I liked what I was learning. Um, I liked my professors, but I just didn't feel like I could do the bench work um, on a day-to-day -day basis. I wanted to be more with people working, you know, on um, directly with disease research and less with working with rats and mice every single day. Um, so I ended up graduating with my master's in neuroscience from Drexel in 2017. And after that, I sort of knew I wanted to pursue a more clinical route. I just wasn't quite sure yet what that was going to look like for me. Um, so I spent some time teaching neuroscience to uh, middle school and high schoolers after graduating that summer um, at Franklin Marshall University out in Lancaster. And that was a very interesting experience, um, just kind of very humbling to teach. I have a lot of respect for teachers. Um, it wasn't easy, but that sort of helped me build on my knowledge base a little bit. And then I ended up applying to jobs at the University of Pennsylvania. I really wanted to work at Penn. I knew that that would be the best place to do clinical research. Um, and so I must have applied to over a hundred jobs, just hoping <laughs> to hear back from one of them. And I had my supervisor reach out to me and ask if I wanted to interview for a completely different position than what I applied for, which is just kind of funny how life works sometimes. Um, and I ended up working at the Penn FTD Center for almost three years. I did um, neuroimaging, so I conducted a functional MRI study. Um, I pretty much would work with patients from our neurology clinic and guide them throughout a research day. Um, I collected all of the data, I scheduled all of the visits, I analyzed all the data, um, and through that experience, I realized, well, wait a second, I'm not just doing research, I'm also interacting with people on a daily basis. Um, I really, really enjoyed working with not only our patients from our neurology clinic, but also the caregivers, um, because these people were dedicating their time, you know, really long research days coming in, getting MRIs, cognitive testing, blood draws, lumbar punctures, um, and they weren't really getting much out of it. They were just donating their time um, for research studies. And I thought, okay, I really want to help these people more than what I'm doing now. And so at that point, um, I was inspired by a nurse practitioner who worked in our lab. And I thought, I've never considered this career path before, um, but this would allow me to do clinical research, work directly with patients. And so I felt like that was the best fit for me. Um, and so I applied to nursing school and here I am at Penn now. Um, and I'm very happy with this career choice. I feel like it's a much more 
rewarding career path than where I started. Um, so yeah, so similar to what Jess said, if you have any questions about my very circuitous path to nursing school, um, feel free to put it in the chat. All right, so now we kind of wanna hear from you and see what career path you guys are considering now um, at this stage in your education and career. So I believe you should be able to see options. If you can't, let me know. This is my first time using Pear Deck, so I'm hoping it goes okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, I see. Okay, I see responses coming in. That's good. Obviously, I couldn't list every single career path in healthcare on here, but I know there's some missing, like public health. Um, I'm not even sure if I have research listed on here, but as far as you know, uh, healthcare fields, I tried to list a couple different options to give you. Let's see if I can show responses. Oh, there we go. Oh, lots of med school. Wow. <laughs> Doesn't really give me the number breakdown, does it? Oh, no, it does. Okay, 38 people for medical school. See if any more are coming in, but looks overwhelmingly medical school. Hopefully you can learn something from this presentation too. <laughs> All right, so that, that gives us some information about you all. Um, and so as far as why nursing, in comparing sort of the different career models, and since many of you are interested in pursuing medical school, um, we thought we would just kind of compare and contrast some of the different career paths. So in, in my consideration of the healthcare field, um, I knew I did not want to pursue medical school. Uh, both my older siblings actually are doctors and nothing against doctors. I just kind of knew it wasn't the right path for me. It never really felt like the right path. It wasn't really something I had considered, but I definitely was debating between PA and NP and kind of looking at the different um, the different training models. And so you can see that physician assistant is more of a medical based training model, whereas a nurse practitioner obviously is under more of a nursing model. Um, the, the years of education are definitely different. Um, so after you graduate from college, you would go for two to three years for PA school. Nursing school, um, Obviously, as a second degree, we had to complete some prerequisite courses before we began our program. And then, but typically it would be four years and then an extra two years, depending on your MP specialty, that can kind of vary a little bit. Um, and then again, unlike a physician, there's no residency required, but you do specialize. So you can specialize in pediatrics, you can specialize in geriatrics, um, which Personally, I like because it sort of hones in on your interest, but you're never really locked in the same way you're kind of locked into a residency. If you're pursuing, you know, I want to be a neurologist or I want to be a cardiologist, there's a little bit more flexibility in nursing. And you can practice independently as a nurse practitioner in some states. Um, other states, you're still overseen by a physician. Um, those laws are starting to change about how much independence you have as an NP. Um, but it's, it kind of depends on the state that you live in. And so if that's something that you're considering, I would recommend looking into your state um, requirements right now and kind of, you know, get, getting a sense of, okay, what does my career path look like after I graduate from nurse practitioner school or from PA school? PA is supervised under a physician. Um, and then the salary ranges are very different. So I think this infographic is a good ballpark, but I would say it definitely depends on what you're specializing in. I mean, I know that if you're a nurse practitioner and you're specializing in um, anesthesiology, that's gonna, you know, your salary end is gonna get bumped up a little bit more. Um, likewise, there's a vast uh, variety in physician uh, salary ranges depending on what residency you pursue. And so just keep this in mind that this is an estimate, but this isn't necessarily um, an exact science. Yeah, so um, next we'll have you name some nursing degrees that you can obtain. So whether you know someone who has the degree or you've heard of it, um, you'd like to check if what you've heard is correct, just type in some um, nursing degrees that you know of. Oh, I can scroll, good. <laughs> hey. Awesome, yeah. You guys know a lot more than I think I did before I started. So <laughs> this is great. Cool. Great. Awesome. Um, so I think we can kind of go to the next slide and I'll break down some of the um, within the nursing um, realm, what you can obtain. So we'll start off with the CNA, which is a certified nursing assistant. 
Um, this is a role that um, if you have a high school degree, um, you're able to then take a certification program um, in order to get uh, become a certified nursing assistant. So it's a diploma nursing program. It usually takes four to 12 weeks. Um, and the CNA role, you are typically doing, helping with a lot of activities of daily living. So that's um, helping people bathe, eat, um, get dressed, um, walk around. Uh, CNAs can work in the hospital setting and they can also work in outpatient um, settings, typically in uh, long-term care facilities or nursing homes. Um, and so a CNA um, will always be under the direction of a registered nurse or an LPN, which is the licensed practical nurse. Um, and so we'll go kind of to the next step, the licensed practical nurse. Um, that again is a state approved certification. Um, you obtain an associate's degree in nursing and that can take 12 to 18 months. And in an LPN role, um, you gain a little bit more autonomy in what you're able to do. However, um, one of the limitations is that you are not able to assess patients. So an LPN can help with all those activities of daily living. Um, they can, state by state, it varies, but LPNs um, are often able to administer certain medications. Um, so they're, if they are at a like long-term care facility, they might be the one passing the morning meds, um, but they are, an LPN always remains under the direction of a registered nurse or um, a provider, like a, a doctor, a PA or nurse practitioner. Um, and um, they would have to like sort of alert a registered nurse about some concerns, but they're not able to provide um, an assessment or recommendations to a provider in the way that a registered nurse is. Um, and so registered nurse, that's what, so Melanie and I, when we graduate with our bachelor's of science in nursing, we'll take the NCLEX. And um, after we pass the NCLEX, we will become a registered nurse. And so registered nurse is what you see um, most often who, is um, in the hospital setting. You can also be in long-term care, outpatient, and we'll get into some of the other specialties, but um, a registered nurse is able to administer medications. Um, they are the ones assessing a patient, um, taking vitals, um, and they are also in charge of um, delegating tasks to the LPNs and CNAs. Um, and so in the registered nurse role, there's a lot of different area settings and specialties that you can work in sort of one of the transitions that's happened or that's been happening um, is that to be a registered nurse, they used to have associate degree programs in nursing. Um, they also used to have like hospital training programs and that's sort of being phased out. Those were two year um, degrees. And now it's um, most people who have an associate's degree are being encouraged to get a bachelor's. Um, otherwise people are just getting bachelor's degrees in nursing. Um, and the difference is four years of training to get the bachelor's. And if you are um, getting an associate's degree in nursing, sometimes that is more technically focused, whereas um, the bachelor's of science, you're taking a lot of um, courses, like some of the courses that we take at Penn, um, including like public health and um, like certain case study courses or other things that sort of um, hone in on the holistic approach of nursing. Um, and some of the psychosocial concerns and social determinants of health um, and things that may not be allowed for in a two-year program. Then a step up from the registered nurse is going to get your master's. Um, and so after you are a registered nurse, you can go back to school to get your master's in nursing. And again, this is something that you can specialize in. So when you become an advanced practice registered nurse, um, you can specialize in something called um, like a certified nurse midwife where you're helping give like deliver babies, things like that. Um, you can become a nurse practitioner. Nurse practitioners can work as a provider in hospitals. They can work in outpatient settings. Um, so you may have uh, uh, like your, your main medical doctor that you go see every year for your annual physical might be a nurse practitioner. A nurse practitioner um, can also be in like critical care or in an ICU in a hospital. So there's a lot of um, specific training that you have to go to um, to specialize in primary care or critical care at that advanced level. Um, the biggest difference between a registered nurse and the advanced practice nurse is an advanced practice nurse is able to diagnose and prescribe medications. 
And as Melanie mentioned, in some states, the advanced practice nurse is able to practice independently, um, so they can open their own practice. Again, that's state by state. Um, but whereas a registered nurse is sort of assessing and administering med medications, the advanced practice nurse is uh, making those final decisions, diagnosing um, and um, delivering, like asking the registered nurse to carry out those actions. Um, another transition that's similar to what happened with the registered nurse, now with the advanced practice um, nursing degree, you can also get a doctorate. And so um, there are some specialties that are already shifting towards getting a doctorate of nursing practice, whereas um, for other specialties, just a master's of science in nursing is sufficient. Um, for the master's of science, that's a two-year postgraduate doctor of nursing. It's also two years, but sometimes um, with the research that you might be doing um, in your doctorate degree, it can be a little bit longer than two years. Um, and so the doctorate of nursing practice, uh, a lot of times, yeah, it's more, um, it can be a little bit more research focused. Um, and at this point, you do not need a doctorate in order to be a nurse practitioner or um, like a nurse midwife or anything like that. Um, but that shift is, is um, in conversation of should it be a doctorate level degree? Um, so that's something to stay in tune with if you are pursuing uh, a degree in nursing is um, sort of what you want that final degree to look like for yourself. If you want it to be a doctorate or if you're, um, if you're not as interested in research then maybe just the masters of nursing is the, the best route. All right, so a little bit about the curriculum and Jess sort of alluded to this a little bit before, um, but there are some you know, basic um, science classes that you would be required to take as part of the BSN curriculum. So this again is gonna look a little bit different if nursing is your first degree or if it's your second degree, um, but you know, you're know you definitely gonna have basic sciences like biology, chemistry. Um, as far as some of our prerequisite courses, we were required to take uh, human anatomy and physiology, uh, microbiology, nutrition. Um, there's also some other courses like statistics that you would be required to take. Um, either within the program or before starting a second degree program, um, as well as courses in social sciences, um, psychology, ethics. Um, ethics is a big one too that's required within our curriculum, just kind of learning the history of um, bioethics and things that sort of were done incorrectly in the past so that we can learn from them and um, be better providers in the future. Um, same thing with public health courses as well. Um, that's really important to the nursing field as a whole. And then in junior and senior year, you start to kind of transition to more clinical based learning. So that's really when you start to get more of that hands on experience. Um, and so you have clinical rotations um, similar to, I guess, similar to medical school as well, where you kind of rotate through different areas of practice. Um, these would include things like psychiatric nursing, pediatric nursing. Um, medical and surgical units, and then nurse leadership. I feel like we're forgetting one in there. Oh, uh, women's health, uh, OBGYN as well. Um, so those were some of the clinicals that Jess and I have already um, completed. And this is really the time in which I would say you learn what you enjoy most. If you are unaware yet of what career path or what specialty you're most interested in, uh, clinical rotations are the best time to really figure that out and see what you enjoy um, most about nursing. And so um, for me, actually, I would say my community clinical has been my favorite so far because I got to work with geriatric patients um, directly. We actually were able to administer COVID vaccines to people in the community. And as somebody who wants to specialize in geriatrics, um, I really had enjoyed working with the older population. Um, but for some people, when they do like their pediatric rotation, it sort of clicks like, ah, yes, this is exactly what I want to do. Um, and that's sort of, you know, kind of the point of clinicals is to learn more about what you're interested in. And of course, programs are different depending on what university you go to. Um, some start nursing courses in the first two years and others might wait until um, your junior year. So it really just depends on the program. If you are applying to nursing school, I would be sure that you kind of look into the courses that are required, any kind of prerequisite courses that you would need, and just make sure that um, all those requirements are met um, when you're in that application phase. 
Okay, and so um, now we just want to give you an opportunity to see how many different nursing specialties that you can name. Um, I said 30 seconds, I'll give you a, maybe less, maybe more, depending on how the responses come in. But um, there are, you know, an incredible amount of nursing specialties that I wasn't even aware of before starting nursing school. So I'm curious to see how many you all can name. So let's, let's see if I can show the responses as they come in. Nice. Oh, good. Yeah. These are great. I can see typing. <laughs> yes. yep. I can see them like real time as they're coming in. I'm like, wow. All right, good. Let's see if they up. Oh, yep, there's neurology. I see a geriatrics slowly coming in. Yep. <laughs> All right, nice. Um, you guys hit on a lot of the nursing specialties, which is great. Um, some of the ones that I know a lot of people wrote down. So um, you have pediatrics, geriatrics. So pediatrics working with um, children up to ages 18. Um, geriatrics, kind of anything above that. Um, critical care um, is interesting. In, in critical care nursing, you can be in a lot of different settings. Ultimately, if you're a critical care nurse, you're working with patients who are very ill, but that can be a patient that's very ill before surgery, after surgery, in an intensive care unit, in an outpatient setting. So um, critical care is kind of an umbrella term and you still might work in different departments of a hospital. Um, so I just want to clarify that um, primary care. So like I said, like if you're going, when you go to your annual, annual physical um, and these are all as a registered nurse, after you go get your bachelor's or if you have your associates in nursing and after you take the NCLEX, these are all um, areas of nursing that you can work in. So um, as a registered nurse, that national board exam, after you take it, um, you can really apply to any nursing position that you want. Certain nursing positions will require you to get um, an additional like small certification, whether that's like basic life support or some of the other ones that I'll mention later require an additional course. The hospital may pay for it. Um, or it's when you like get a, um, your NCLEX, your a licensed nurse, you can apply to work in um, the pediatric ICU and they will train you on the job and then you will, you can call yourself a pediatric ICU nurse, but it's not that you graduated from your nursing program and that's the only thing that you can work in. You can kind of shift between all of these. Um, so I think that's, as Melanie talked about, that's one of the amazing things about nursing is that in your clinical rotations, you can sort of hone down what you think you're interested in. And then once you get in the working atmosphere, um, you can also learn like you can have a job for a year and decide, you know, I thought I wanted to work in pediatrics, but I'd actually really like to work with adults and you can make that shift as well. Um, so that's something that's sort of liberating. If you're someone who's like, oh, I know I want to be in healthcare. I know I don't want to work with patients, but I don't want to have to decide and go down a route of four years of residency and then not, and then kind of be unhappy with, with what happens. So um, another um, specialty that's really interesting is the clinical nurse leader. And so this is a person who is on, most often on like on a hospital floor, they're the ones who provide the most up-to-date education for the nursing staff. So they'll spend time, like they'll go to conferences, they will be looking up um, current research on best practices, and they will help educate the nursing staff um, to make practices safer for patients and for nurses. Um, and they're, so they're great. If you are someone who's kind of interested in education, um, this is a great blend of nursing and education. Some of the ones that I didn't know about um, were burn care and flight nursing. Um, so burn care, you are a registered nurse and then oftentimes you will get like a, um, an additional certification in burn care support. And so you are someone who, you may be working in a burn care unit in a hospital or in an ICU, and you're specialized to treat people who have suffered from um, burns resulting from a natural disaster, um, from any sort of violence, or like a um, if their home caught on fire or anything like that, you are the one providing care. Um, and it's very specialized. So in that sense, um, there aren't a ton of burn care nurses, but it's a really unique field um, that you can look into. 
Another one is flight nursing. So this is sort of like being a, a paramedic in, in, in the air. So you're working on an airplane, on a helicopter, um, and you are, um, when a, say someone gets in a car accident and they need to be flown to a nearby hospital, you're actually the nurse working on the helicopter that's transporting that patient. So you're able to provide emergency level care, but you're doing it um, in the environment of a helicopter. So you have limited resources. You may or may not have a physician with you and you have to be in communication with not only um, the emergency responders at the site, but then also um, the hospital. So in that sense, it can be um, an intense, but often very rewarding um, career path too. That's something that you're interested in. Oncology, that's working with patients with cancer. You could work with pediatric oncology or um, adult oncology. Cardiac, anything, um, there are cardiac ICUs, so that's specifically looking at um, the patient's heart. And so you can kind of be, you can be in a cardiac ICU, you can be cardiac outpatient nurse. Um, NICU is neonatal intensive care unit. Um, so that's working with infants and most often they're born prematurely. So I think at Pennsylvania Hospital in my clinical, the um, one um, patient was born at 21 weeks. That was like the earliest a patient had been born at. And so, you would be the nurse monitoring that patient all day. Um, you'd be bathing the infant, but also like ensuring that they are growing properly, um, any of their medications that they need. Um, you are kind of in charge of that um, baby, obviously under the guise of um, a physician or nurse practitioner, but um, very interesting. Med surg, um, this is like medical and surgical care. Um, a lot of people will go for a med surg position as their first job out of nursing school to gain the most exposure um, and most experience because you're dealing with um, patients from um, across the board with um, many different ailments. Um, so med surg is a, sort of an all-encompassing umbrella term as well. ICU, intensive care unit, um, diabetes. This is um, a field that's definitely growing a lot um, given um, the United States um, population, what we're dealing with with diabetes. And so you can, um, this is also a great role for someone who's interested in sort of education and healthcare um, because diabetes in, requires a lot of patient education. And so you can re really be involved in the patient's um, life and making sure that they're receiving all the services they need and giving them education that's um, relevant and most appropriate for them. Forensic nursing is one that's focused on um, nursing in or helping provide like trauma-informed care. And so when you're a forensic nurse, you're often um, engaging with patients who um, suffered from violence, abuse, neglect. And so this is um, sort of a blend of psychiatric nursing in the sense of you are thinking about how the patient's emotional stability is while also helping them um, recover from any physical injuries that they have um, suffered from. Infectious disease can kind of fall under that public health role. Um, so this is something um, where you could be in a hospital setting, but you could also be um, outside of a hospital setting sort of in um, legislation or a political environment as well. So those are just some of the nursing specialties. There are definitely more out there, um, but hopefully this gives you an idea of just um, all that you can do as a registered nurse. That was great. I learned a lot too. <laughs> Yeah, there's just there's so many options in nursing, which I think is what makes it such a great field. Um, okay, so another opportunity to participate. Um, this time, I want you guys to guess a number of how many different nursing careers you think that there are. Um, obviously, it's hard to approximate, but I just want to get a sense of how many you think. And maybe now you have a better idea after Jess kind of explains some of the specialties that obviously there's a lot more than meets the eye. Uh, let's see. Oh, nice. Oh, I like this display. Okay, it looks like the the mean is roughly 32. Let's see. Oh, it's jumping. Let's see how many responses. Okay, we only have, all right, 30 responses so far. 40. All right, so there are definitely, I would say, well over 50, I, probably maybe even 100. I, I, I couldn't even find a number online, but there are so many different career options in nursing. 
Um, and so I won't go too much into this and this is kind of hard to read, but this is just to give you an idea of like the sheer volume of career options. Um, anything from being a bedside nurse um, to working in primary care, uh, travel nursing, again, um, as was mentioned earlier, um, this is sort of becoming a more popular field, I would say, just because of the flexibility of like, you can kind of just, you can see the world and also practice nursing at the same time, which as someone who loves to travel, I think sounds like one of the coolest jobs ever. Um, and then again, going into public health. Um, I think the thing with nursing too, is that there's an opportunity, opportunity to overlap with other careers. So you can collaborate with a lot of different people. So if you're working in clinical research, you're going to be working with um, people who have their PhD. Uh, if you're working in public health, people who have their MPH, um, you know, forensic nursing, working with scientists, uh, you can do bioinformatic nursing. We actually had somebody speak once in, in one of our courses, I can't recall which course it was now, who basically was involved in the development of electronic medical records. So she was involved in sort of how can, how can we best design an electronic medical record to suit the people who are using it, to help the nurses, to help the doctors, to help everybody in the hospital um, save time in, in charting all of that information when you see a patient, laying out the design in a way that makes the most sense so that you can easily see their medications, you can see their, their physician orders, um, what else? Seeing their, their visits, seeing all the notes that people enter into the, the electronic medical record. And a lot of that design was coming from nurses because nurses are the ones who are actually using that software on a day-to-day -day basis. And so um, not just being at the bedside, but also as a nurse being more behind the scenes in the technology aspect of, of things. And then of course you can be involved even higher up than that, doing more of administrative work um, and so I believe it's the CEO of HUP, correct me if I'm wrong, is a nurse. Um, she came from a nursing background herself. And so that's also kind of neat to have the person who is in charge of the whole hospital basically be a nurse and kind of view things from a nursing perspective, a nursing model. And then there's also legal nursing, um, which is exactly what it sounds like, like, you know, practicing um, nursing expertise in the realm of the law and uh, legal requirements. And so again, that kind of goes back to that collaboration that there's so much overlap in nursing. You could be working with lawyers, doctors, um, you know, scientists, and you're not really ever bound to just nursing. There's so much more than just nursing. Um, and if you choose to practice as a bedside nurse and you decide, okay, I've enjoyed this part of my career. Now I want to move on to something else. You always have that flexibility to do that. You're never trapped into one um, career. You're never locked in, and so that's that's the beauty of nursing as a career. And so, yeah, Jess, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, and this one I'll keep kind of short and sweet, so we have time for a Q and A. Um, but basically. Um, as Melanie said, like there's so many different people that you and professions that you can interact with as a nurse. And so we just wanted to highlight, especially with unity and healthcare being the theme, um, thinking about when you are a nurse. And even if you're if you are pursuing like um, MD roles or um, OT, PT, we're all going to be working together. And that's really important to remember that we are here for the patient. And so whether you are um, whatever healthcare role you're in, knowing that you have people to um, ask for referrals for or provide more specialized care. So if um, I'm a nurse, I'm noticing my patient is having difficulty walking, I'm, I'm going to encourage them to get um, up out of bed, make sure they have their socks and shoes on and make sure they're in a safe place. But I'm actually going to refer physical therapy to come in and work with that patient because I don't know the specifics of maybe why that patient um, is having trouble walking and physical therapy has the training to help them do that. And this can happen through um, like dietary, um, dietitians getting involved, helping create um, more accurate nutrition plans to help patients heal faster. You can have social work who are aware of community resources. So after a patient's discharged, social work can follow up with them, make sure they're able to um, pay their bills or meet some of those um, outside resources that they really need. Um, pastoral care can help with the patient while they're inpatient um, and sort of dealing with some of their emotional and spiritual needs. 
Palliative care is amazing with helping with pain. Um, and palliative care, just so everyone knows, is not the same as hospice. Palliative care is, can help anyone at, at any stage of um, their um, illness or injury. It doesn't um, mean that they're like close to death or anything, it's just helping with pain. Occupational therapy, speech pathology, pathology all wonderful resources um, that we need to be aware of so that we can um, best serve our patients. And just as a reminder, nurses dispense comfort, compassion, and caring without even a prescription. So this is, um, I think Melanie and I would both attest to like, this is a huge reason why we pursued nursing for that holistic approach and um, really caring for the, the whole person. Melanie, if you wanna add anything to that quote. <laughs> no, I think that's great. I think you summarized it perfectly. Um, so yeah, so thank you all for your attention. And I guess now we can try to open it up for some questions. Yeah, we can go ahead and move on to our Q&A. Um, would it be possible if you could stop sharing your screen? Yep. Perfect. So our first question is, how long is the accelerated program that you're in? So currently our program is 18 months. Um, and we kind of started shortly after uh, COVID. So our program was sort of partly virtual, our clinicals were in person, um, but yeah, it's an 18 month program and we graduate in December. Okay, our next question is, before deciding on nursing, what are some specific career paths you considered as a biology major? <laughs> well, I, I guess speaking for myself, I considered um, I considered mostly bench science. I kind of thought, okay, I like science. It seemed like the next logical step was to work at a bench, um, especially because I knew I didn't want to go into uh, medicine. I didn't want to become a doctor. So I never really ever thought about any kind of other career path besides like bench research until I got to clinical research. And then I was like, wait a second. And then the light bulb sort of clicked for me, but yeah. I was way all over the place. Um, I started by as biology major thinking I wanted to go physician assistant. Um, I realized I may or may not have the patient contact hours that I would need after I graduated. Um, so that's something like PA school, you have to have a certain amount of hours. It's definitely possible to get, you can work as an EMT, a CNA, you can definitely get those hours. Um, just the trajectory I was taking, I didn't know if I'd be able to. Um, so PA first, um, then during the study abroad, I liked nursing, but I also had a very difficult time during study abroad. I, everything was in Spanish. So half of it, I didn't understand. So I was like, do I like nursing or is it that it was difficult because it was in Spanish? Like what? So I kind of was like, maybe I like nursing, but I don't know. Um, and then when I did the internship um, with the medical examiner, I thought, oh, maybe I'll become a doctor. Like I hadn't really considered that, but I was working with doctors and like, oh, this is something I could do. Um, so for me, I kind of jumped around through all those different career paths. Um, and it was really the culmination of experiences that I got. And then a lot of it was shadowing. So I didn't mention this, but I shadowed as much as I could. So I shadowed registered nurses. I shadowed nurse practitioners. I shadowed doctors. I shadowed PAs throughout the time I was in school. Um, so I would say any connection that you have, utilize it, shadow people, even if it's only for four hours, um, just to be in that hospital setting to see what kind of decisions they have to make, see how much patient contact time they have and what, if that aligns with what you want. Um, and I also considered, okay, I have this degree in biology, I could also teach. And so that was sort of my time in Korea. I was like, do I actually really like education more than I thought? Um, and then afterwards it was like, no, I want healthcare. I wanna work with patients. I want to work with families and I want to be a part of um, working through some of the more intense life decisions that they have to go through. Um, so that's how I eventually came around to it. But um, yeah, I explored it all. Um, and like Melanie said, like you, you meet different people and you'll learn from them. And in that process, that's when give yourself time to make that decision. Um, it definitely makes a difference. Thank you. That's great advice. Um, our next question is, can you expand on the difference between the nursing model and the med medicine model that you um, mentioned in the presentation? 
Yeah. And jump in just if you have a better explanation than I do. But I would say, I mean, from the medical standpoint and the way it was explained to me is that that comes more from a diagnosis perspective. Um, not to say that MPs obviously still diagnose, but I think a lot of our day-to-day um, model of a nurse is the kind of compassionate care model. And so we come from a place of sort of seeing the patient as a whole and meeting the patient's needs beyond just medical treatment, although that obviously is part of it. We also treat the person, we, we sit there and listen. I mean, part of my job right now, I kind of work in a CNA role while I'm still finishing school. A lot of my job is just sitting there and listening to patients talk. And I think that's a huge part of nursing is making sure your patient feels heard and understood. And if there's something that you can't provide to them, then we connect them with those resources. We get them to physical therapy. We get them to speech, um, uh, speech therapy, whatever it is that they need. It's sort of like treating the entire patient. Um, and I think a lot of our nursing education comes from that is like, how can we treat the person as a whole, not just their medical condition? Um, if there's anything I missed, jump in. But I would say that's, that's the biggest difference for me and why I chose nursing is because I wanted to practice from a more caring and compassionate standpoint, not just let's treat somebody and, you know, put them on their way kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say kind of going off of that, um, what I've seen is, um, so in the medical model, um, just from sheer like, okay, you go to medical school for four years, then you have a residency for four years. There's a lot of specific medical information that um, is great to deal with specific pathologies and looking at like the disease process itself. And a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse will also be aware of that pathology, but they do have less training in it. And so, but they, their focus is more like Melanie said on the whole person. And so um, I think if you are someone who really loves biology and you like all the minute cellular details, like the medical route can be totally invigorating and um, really interesting. But if you're someone who's more like, okay, I know that their cells are doing this, but I also want to talk about like what their family life is like and how that's contributing to making this worse for them or or what we can do to help um, with their spiritual needs or are they getting physical therapy, then that's sort of like the more nursing model of that whole person versus um, sort of the specific disease process in the medical realm. And again, that's my understanding of it. That's kind of what I've seen, but um, I'm not a medical provider, so. (laughs) Great, thank you. So this is also um, touched on a bit, but what are the pros and cons of being a nurse and why did you choose nursing over um, a PA, MD, or DO? I I think the biggest thing for me, and yeah, we did touch on this a little bit, um, was that it's, I personally like the flexibility of nursing, especially as this being, really my second career, I wanted to be really sure that this was the, this was the right path for me. And I think kind of knowing that I can kind of move throughout different career paths and not be so locked in was so appealing to me because, you know, I can still work with patients, but if I decide one day, nope, not geriatrics, I love kids. I want to work with the babies. Like that's something I can do. And I, I just like the flexibility of, you know, of just having that option constantly available. I also liked the autonomy um, in pursuing NP versus PA, knowing that, you know, I just have a little bit, little bit more autonomy that if I wanted to practice independently one day, I could obviously depending on the state, but that that option was still available to me. Um, And I really, I really want that autonomy. I'm excited to one day be able to actually practice independently and see patients. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. I think it does. I'd say same difference, NP, PA. I wanted the autonomy and then MD to NP. um, Yeah, that holistic approach um, is more of what aligned with um, my interests and that ability to shift. Having options is great. So um, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. The next question is, do you feel that there's a big demand for nurses right now with the current pandemic? Yes. Yeah, a huge demand. Everyone I talk to says uh, you'll have no problem getting a job, which is 
you always want to hear that. That's the best thing you can hear. Um, but yeah, there, I think there is a huge demand. There's job openings left and right in every possible field. Um, I don't, yeah, it's not going to be an issue. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, our next question is, what are some challenges you faced in the process of becoming a nurse and how did you overcome them? Mm, that's a good question. I, I, I honestly just wanna say like work-life balance, especially being in like an accelerated program has been challenging. Um, I also think in terms of just working with patients, like recognizing that you can't fix everything, which is like very difficult for me as a fixer. Um, like even just the other day, I had a patient that was just kind of like crying about her situation. And I realized like, I can't fix this, but I can sit here and just listen to her and spend time with her and, you know, ask her about her life. And so I think there's those moments of nursing. that's very challenging where you feel like you have to have an answer right there, or you have to know everything. And that's not true. Um, I think we're all still learning. And I think the best thing that you can do is just just be present and be there. And sometimes that's all that you can provide for somebody. Melanie summed it up great. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, the next question is, do you have any advice on how to shadow professionals and gain experience in nursing in the nursing setting while in college? I think you want to take this, Jess, because I think you've talked a little bit about shadowing before. Sure. Um, so some of it was sheer blind emails to people. Um, like I had, um, I went to like the career services department at St. Mike's and was like, do you know any nurses? Um, do you have their emails or any people in the healthcare system? Do you have their emails? And I would just be like, Hey, I'm a student at St. Michael's college. Um, I'm really interested in pursuing X, Y, Z. Um, if there's an opportunity to shadow you, I'd be really interested. Um, and went from there. I probably, I don't know how many emails I sent. I'd say I maybe got a the response from like a fifth of the people, but that was still a fifth of the people. So I still had plenty of time to um, explore. I would say professors also will know people that you can shadow. So your career services department and um, professors that you have a, like a working relationship with that can also be helpful. Um, and then if you have any family or relatives that you know of that may know people in the healthcare facility or, or work in the healthcare industry um, themselves, having that, just sharing with family, yeah, you know, this is something I'm really interested in. If you know of anyone that might let me shadow them, like, please um, let me know. So my mom is a teacher. Um, she referred me to her school nurse. Her school nurse used to work in the hospital in on an oncology unit. And so she referred me to three other nurses um, and a nurse practitioner. And then my stepdad, skis with a um, physician. So it was like a lot of random connections where if you just start sharing with people that it's something you're interested in, people are very willing to help. So um, it can feel awkward, but just send the email or, or um, share your contact information or just tell people that this is something you're, that something you're looking to do. I will also note that um, people in the healthcare industry are busy. So if you specify like, oh, I have a break in February or I have a break in April or I have the whole month of August that's available. Does this work for you? Giving them sort of those specific timelines can also be helpful because um, if they're dealing with a lot of patient cases, the last thing they wanna do is try to organize your schedule. So if you can present to them, like I would be available the first week of April, does that work for you? Then um, it kind of helps them not have to deal with um, that element of letting you shadow them. Then you can just show up and, and shadow. That's great advice. Thank you so much. So we are nearing the end of our time, um, but thank you so much for this amazing presentation, Jessica and Melanie. Um, for the attendees, we would love to hear your feedback about the session. There will be a short anonymous poll um, to submit feedback and it'll be live um, soon. And other than that, for the attendees, be sure to come back at 11 for our next session, Psychiatric, Psychiatry as a Career with Dr. Crystal. Um, thank you so much again, Melanie and Jessica. Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone, and best of luck. Yay.